hey class, I want to walk you through um, a film analysis of Hoop Dreams. So you have watched um, the, the sequence from Hoop Dreams, which is about 10 minutes long. And then I had you watch the, um, the series of videos that talked about the different elements of filmmaking, the technical elements such as editing um, and shot composition and camera angles and things like that. And so now I'm going to just show you an example of how you put that into practice. So this is my film analysis worksheet for Hoop Dreams. Um, and, you know, the first thing it, that it asks you to do is to describe what you think the message or purpose is of the scene that you will analyze. What does the filmmaker hope to convey? And so I said, you know, like if I'm thinking about the first 10 minutes of that movie, I think what it's trying to do is kind of like establish who the two characters are and you know, convey how, what their dream is, right? The, the title of the film is Hoop Dreams, and the first 10 minutes conveys just how their lives completely revolve around basketball, right? And it also shows you sort of like the world that they're living in, their families, their neighborhoods. Um, and so it also, you know, in having like William's brother and Arthur's dad talk about their own hoop dreams and how they didn't reach them, it also like has a, a, a bit of, um, a suggestion of the challenges that might await them on their road to trying to become NBA players. So that that was where I wrote what I what I talked about here briefly, right? Was just what I thought the purpose of the first ten minutes was. And then in each of these sections, I'm going to like talk really specifically about stuff that happens in the film. And a sheet like this, right? Like, say you take a film analysis class or a film studies class. This is basically like brainstorming, right? Like by doing this sheet and describing specific things from the film and describing their effects where I'm doing like the analysis, I'm pretty much writing a paper here, you know, like I'm, I'm building the evidence up for a paper. If I wanted to like say like, here's my claim about what the first 10 minutes is about. Here's all my evidence in these boxes. So um, down the bottom here, I talk about shot composition, right? And I said, um, you know, shot composition has to do with um, the position, the size, the prominence of objects or characters, right? This is a documentary film, and um, documentaries will use a lot of like close-ups in interviews. Certain documentaries will do this at least, right? So one of the first shots I described is the zoom in on William, which is like the first time we meet William, saying that I want to play in the NBA, right? And this like kind of really creates intimacy, um, and you're really kind of pulling for William. Like he's got this big smile on his face talking about like, you know, I want to play in the NBA, um, and... It, it, he's he's warm and you kind of get that right so you you feel connected it, it connects you to his dream in a way i also talked about i think one of the really neat shots in um this opening sequence is where we see william go up the first time we see him kind of go up and dunk and he kind of comes from from below i see i wrote from twice here um so the shot is static on the hoop and you see william kind of like come up into the frame so you kind of feel him rising up to, to, to dunk and like I think that conveys like just this sense of him going up and, and rising in in a way that it wouldn't have if it focused if it went up uh, like if the camera angle was shot different but since it's the the camera stays up there on the the backboard and the rim and we see William come up into the frame I think it's trying to kind of convey that there's also the the interviews with William's mother um, his brother and Arthur's parents and all those things they're shot really close up tight on their faces right and it creates intimacy those kinds of shots always create intimacy between the viewer and the person being interviewed um you don't get that from arthur which is interesting too because arthur's often like looking away from the camera um like he's talking but he's not always looking at the camera and and that's interesting towards the end of the montage we hear coach pingator talk about how he feels like arthur lacks confidence and it's a little harder to get arthur to like kind of make, you know, being willing to make eye contact is often a sign of confidence, right? And so it's interesting that we don't see Arthur doing that in the first 10 minutes of the um, film. Um, there's also the shot when they're driving, when Arthur is with Earl and um, the camera pans outside of like these larger sprawling sort of suburban homes. 
And that really like establishes kind of a contrast with everything we had seen up to that point in Arthur's neighborhood. So, you know, that was really intentional to shoot outside the car so that you could get a, a sense of how the setting has changed. And at that point, Arthur starts talking about how, you know, it would be different to go to school out there and he's never really been with kids from other races and stuff. So, you know, that's that's something that's trying to be conveyed with that shot. Another really interesting shot is when they're in Coach Pingator's office and um there's a real, I think it conveys power dynamic. Like you have Pingator is like kind of leaning back in his chair and he's kind of spread open a little bit. And like, that's a power posture. And and then like the family is kind of like squished in, like Arthur's father has Arthur's um, sister on his lap or brother, sorry. And um, the, the, the whole, the shots of the family feel a lot more cramped and you kind of feel like they're being like squeezed into this powerful person's office, you know? So it really conveys the power dynamic there. Um, okay. And then with camera angles, right? Like I said, the close-ups of the interviews do create intimacy. Um, I, uh, another shot that I really like in this opening montage that I, I think conveys a lot of information is in the car. There's the, a close-up of Arthur gripping the basketball and that scene, you know, it feels almost claustrophobic. Like you, you definitely feel Arthur's anxiety. He even says he's scared when he's asked. And, um, the way that the sh camera angle is slightly above him it does kind of make him feel a little bit smaller, especially when it's down on his hand on the basketball. Um, there are, so, so I like, I feel like that was a, a real moment where we really feel what Arthur's kind of going through. It creates, um, you know, a real sense for, from us of, of like, you know, I identifying with him. Um, and then there's all the shots. There's like a lot of what are called establishing shots. So besides all the close-ups of things that are happening, a lot of times there'll be like a long shot from far away that like, captures the whole neighborhood or the whole street right um and those shots oftentimes they showed like maybe like a building that was boarded up or like the basketball nets might be ripped or something and it's just trying to kind of like convey um the neighborhood to you and and where these kids are and um you know so the effect of that is you know you might start to get a sense of like just just how much it, you know to these kids like getting out getting to the nba it's all they think about kind of and they, you know, they don't probably see a whole, lots of other like opportunities is at least the sense you get by looking right at the neighborhood. Um, and then let's just see. So editing. Um, so the opening scene, right? Okay. The editing has to do with like, you know, cutting between shots, right? Do they cut quickly? How are emotions conveyed or what information? And I described some editing where at the beginning they cut back and forth between like both boys' homes and their families watching the All-Star game. And then we also see them playing, you know, the cuts to them, like shots of them playing. And and one we see Arthur like copying the move that Isaiah is making, where he kind of does like a 360 in the air as he as he goes in for the layup. Um, and, you know, all this kind of like it also like ties the two boys together because they're they're both doing the same thing. So even though they don't know each other, right, it, it like creates an intimacy between the families almost. And we see, you know, how important basketball is to both of them. And also we really see like the importance of family um, and how how close knit these families are. Um, another really interesting thing that's done, and this is one of the most intentional things, I think, in this opening montage in terms of like structuring it is like Isaiah Thomas is this kind of like through line through the first 10 minutes, right? He's playing at the All-Star game where they're watching at the beginning and um, the announcer says like seven time All-Star Isaiah Thomas or something. Um, in the car, the filmmaker asks Arthur, you know, what if Isaiah's there? And it, you know, it, it sounds like, I mean, we see that Isaiah actually is there. So maybe the filmmaker was tipped off that he was going to be there. I'm not sure. Um, and then we see, you know, in the coach's office, at one point, the camera goes to a close up of a picture of Isaiah Thomas on the wall. Um, and then Isaiah actually shows up at the, at the, um, uh, blah, 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 at the, at the camp. And so that, that, you know, knowing that he showed up at the camp probably deter pushed the filmmakers to like, kind of like prepare you for that. Right. Like they foreshadow it by, by having him, by focusing on him in the all-star game, showing Arthur copying his moves. So there's, you know, we really builds up like it gives structure to the whole montage. It shows how important Isaiah is as a figure in Arthur's head. And then like leading up to Arthur, um, you know, getting to like try to defend him as, as Isaiah goes in for the layup. Um, 
there's another she- sequence is like when when Earl spots Arthur playing and and it keeps cutting quickly between Arthur doing different things like scoring and passing and rebounding and he's kind of doing it all and then you see Earl's face kind of like man this kid's good you know um and all that's just conveying to us right we we can we're kind of put in the same position as Earl of like we're watching what seeing what Earl's seeing um and we're also like kind of impressed just with how good Arthur is at such a young age um, the last two elements that I'm asking you to kind of try and comment on, right, is cinematography, so color and lighting, and then the sound, right? So the lighting is pretty, like, natural throughout the film. Like, it really just tries to capture things as they are. Um, there's not a lot of artificial lighting, like, to make it darker or to make it brighter. Um, and so, you know, the, the effect of that is really to just capture things how they are. Like, we don't feel like there's anything. Um, you, you, and I think that that just conveys a sense of, like, reality and it makes us trust the filmmakers um and then one thing that the contrast is like when they drive out to St. Joe's it's sunnier and greener like I don't know if it's coincidence or not that like you know in a lot of the scenes in Arthur um and William's neighborhood it's like they're kind of overcast days um and then on that day when they drive out it's a little sunnier so there you do feel the contrast between the two settings um they do use slow motion um can you know for camera motion right they use slow motion like when William goes up to dunk or when Arthur's playing with Isaiah. So, you you know, we linger over those moments a little bit and they seem to be moments of, of sort of triumph or like pivotal, important moments in the boys' basketball lives to this point. Um, most of the sound is diegetic, meaning it comes naturally from the scenes, like the people in the scenes would have heard it. Um, there is occasional use of music, right? The music with Isaiah, when Isaiah and Arthur are playing. Um, and that's interesting because it starts out a little ominous as Isaiah is talking about um, players not making it, you know, when they come to St. Joe's. But then it turns kind of like kind of rousing and heart heart pulling at your heartstrings a bit when he's playing with Arthur. Um, and, you know, the opening scene is interesting. Like, you know, they, they have the music of Hoop Dreams and then you also hear the commentators from the all-star game talking so you're having the, the this point counterpoint kind of thing happening and you know it establishes the setting and the goal of the nba and so you know through all this through, through doing this sort of analysis you can kind of think about how right this is like how the filmmakers use the technical aspects of their craft of their cameras of the sound of the lighting to you know convey what it is that they want to convey about these two boys okay um and so this is what I'm going to ask you to do with uh, any clip that you'd like to choose, right? So um, it could be something you've seen, um, you know, something you really like or something you want to just do an analysis of. And basically, I, I, you know, it's it's this is kind of a close reading, much in the same way we've been reading um, actual text. So um, good luck. And I hope it's helpful just to see kind of how I went about doing this.